Uh, you've got a letter that some Democrats uh, are sending saying, stop this, don't do this roll call, it's not right. But again, what you hear from the DNC chair, Harrison, he's saying, we cannot chance this by waiting, um, by, uh, waiting for the courts. In fact, what he lays out, and again, he went back in his lengthy back and forth uh, on social media with Nate Silver. And this is what Harrison said, because Silver called it a, t a technicality. Go to my iPad. Harrison said, for the last few cycles, it has always been a technicality for Ohio and other states to give a waiver to the RNC and the DNC for their convention certifications. He said, for the first time ever, Ohio didn't do so. He said the DNC uh, acted in our own best interest in May and decided to move forward with the virtual vote. The governor called a special session to address the situation. However, the Ohio GOP decided to play games, refused to pass a clean fix, and passed a bill that included a poison pill for Ohio legislative Democrats. Furthermore, they passed the bill as a non-emergency bill, which meant we have to wait 90 days for enactment, meaning the bill is not enacted until September after the original August 7th deadline. So are we supposed to rely upon the goodwill of those same people? Please don't gaslight me. He also said uh, that um, um, he laid out in terms of uh, the rules committee what they should be doing. Jamie Harrison is right. The last thing you want to do is throw this thing to the courts. And, and, and Nate Silver is even more pathetic because he actually said this here, Ohio, nor is Ohio a swing state. If Biden's name is on the ballot in Ohio and Kamala Harris in the other 49 states, it wouldn't affect his odds of winning the Electoral College one bit. Um, the job of the DNC chair is to have his candidate on all 50 ballots. Nate Silver should shut the hell up. You on mute. Sorry about that. I said Nate Silver has been a problem for a while. Nate Silver is one of these people who's very technically astute, but doesn't really care much, I would say, for the politics of, of everyday people and the lives that they have to live. And the fact of the matter is, if we have a state that can simply take someone off the ballot, this is going to be a problem for the citizens of that state. It's essentially taking away their right to vote. And if you don't think that's a problem because of what statistics tell you, then I think you need to go back and really figure out what this is about to you. I think a lot of people approach political science and politics as it's just a matter of crunching numbers, but this is real people's lives. And so whether it affects the statistical outcome or not, it doesn't really matter. What matters is the rule of law. What matters is the principle of elections and what they're supposed to be for. So if it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter to Nate Silver because his life functionally won't change because of this. It matters to the people of Ohio, however, in particular, the black folks and the Latin folks in Ohio who essentially won't get a vote that day. So this is, I think, again, uh, politics run amok. And part of the reason why people are so confused about what to do, because they get mixed messages like this. And when you start talking about what is statistically anomalous and telling people it essentially doesn't matter, they shouldn't care. Then why would anybody show up? I mean, what's crazy here, Larry you don't chance anything. You don't say, well, you know what? We could just, you know, it's a weak case. We have seen weak cases where the Republican judges just took it to the hilt. Yeah, so Roland, you know, my colleague just made a great point. Another point, I feel like the reminded, reminded of Eddie Murphy who said, don't fall for banana and tailpipe. Listen, the Republicans have been telling you, tell us who they are for the last several years. And what's happened in Ohio has been going on for the last couple of months. So the, the chair is right. You sit, if you sit around and, and wait, who knows what's going to happen? And you certainly, like I said, if this goes to the courts, you, you, you already see the kind of games they're playing. The other thing rolling about this issue, particularly about you know, what's, happening in, what happened in, what's happening in Ohio, is this, this is a snapshot of what a Trump administration will be like if he gets elected. He wins in November 
and then get sworn in January. And I don't think people are paying close enough attention between the rhetoric about him talking about being a dictator and then the games are being played by Republicans in the state of Ohio. They're directly connected. They're telling they're telling you now what it's going to be like under a Trump administration. And so it's going to be really important for like I said, folks to go out and vote. The other thing is Nate is a data scientist. And so being a data scientist does not mean you are a um, you know, I have a I have enough background about politics to understand certainly the legal system. And then secondly, understand that many of the games that are played by state and local party leaders, uh, particularly like the GOP. So I think his opinion doesn't really matter. And the other thing is, Roland, is this, listen, it, once again, this is going to this is going to be like what's going to be like living in the United States in a couple of months if people don't get out to vote. And so I know we're going to talk later about um, President Biden being at the NAACP convention. But it is really important, not only for black folks and, and Latin folks in Ohio, but the states across the country to understand that this is the last line of defense to deal with these issues. Because if not, you'll be dealing with this for years in the future. And then your grandchildren and children would ask you why. Where were you at and why didn't you do something? You know, the, the thing here, uh, Mustafa, that is clear is when you have, first of all, Nate Silver, are you a reporter? Or, like, what the hell are you? <laughs> Who the hell are you to tell the DNC chair in a back and forth that he's gaslighting and they should not be doing something that they have the right to do? Well, you know, Nate Silver has got that TV bug, right? If you have watched his evolution, then you've seen how when you say controversial things that you get more airtime. Um, so I'm not taking anything away from him as a tactician, a statistician, you know, any of the things that are in his technical wheelhouse. But we also understand how being on mainstream media works. Um, so we have to ask the question. Is this a part of his calculus as someone who deals with numbers um, of being able to have more time there? You know, besides that, you know, the, the real question is, are people going to continue to be fooled because we continue to allow ourselves to say this could never happen? And, st and then just walking down like we're walking down a dark alleyway after somebody done punched you in the head one time and saying, well, there's no way somebody going to punch me again. With all the Supreme Court cases that we said could never possibly uh, turn out the way that they did and as devastating as they have. People saying, well, when they first heard about Project 2025, well, this couldn't possibly be as bad as, as folks on the Black Star Network have shared or other folks. So I'm just wondering when folks are actually going to wake up and understand that there is a strategic set of actions that are being put in place. And with those strategic sets of actions, there are also traps that they're hoping that you will step into, um, you know, with the idea that this couldn't possibly happen. I couldn't possibly get caught in this bog, if you will, that would slow a process down, stop someone from being able to vote. So we just need to kind of wake up and understand that folks have actually thought this stuff through and there is real intentionality in the things that we're dealing with in this moment. Fan base exclusive audio rooms are here. Now tap, talk, and get paid. Monetize your live podcast and most engaging conversations. You can now create exclusive audio chat rooms only for your subscribers and biggest fans. And as a user, subscribe, listen, and talk to your favorite creators. Now tap, talk, and get paid. Because everyone's a fan of something, and everyone has a fan base. And if you don't know 